What's going on, good people? Thank you for tuning in to the first ever simulcast of the Notebook Podcast. I'm your boy, Kid Koontz, and I got a very special guest with me today. I can't wait to get to him, but um, I got to give you a little bit of background on how this started. If you're listening to the podcast on the radio, then you already know that we've been talking about um, should your team sign Antonio Brown and what kind of fit he would be to your organization. Now, we already know he's not everybody's cup of tea. So I asked my boy Randy what he thinks, and that led us down a very deep path. We began to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. And so I had to ask him to come on the show because there's plenty of things that I'm sure other people want to know as well. First of all, he's a big Kansas City Chiefs fan, but he lives in the city of Buffalo. I can't wait to hear about this story. Randy, I'm so glad to have you on the show, man. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate you uh, bringing me on. This is definitely something cool to do, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. You had to defend being a Chiefs fan for as long as I've known you, living in the city of Buffalo. So how did you become a Chiefs fan? All right. So no BS. Of course, growing up in Buffalo as a kid, man, I did grow up kind of as a Bills fan. From like 87 to like 93, I was like everybody else in Buffalo cheering on a Bills fan. Mm -hmm. Then 94 hit, and the Chiefs signed Joe Montana, Marcus Allen, and I'm a fan of teams with good running back. Marcus Allen, to me, even though he was a, used to be a Raiders, the fact of how good of a running back he was to me, I fell in love with it, and I just stuck with the Chiefs ever since. I would say about the 2001-2002 season when we had yeah. Trent Green and Tony Gonzalez and Priest Holmes and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? It just carried on from there for me. I think that's pretty interesting, man. I've I've never been a fan of another team other than the hometown Bills. That's just how I was raised. It's got to be annoying, though, having to defend the fact that you're a Chiefs fan living in the city of Buffalo. And I would assume you have to do it all the time. I mean, it can't get annoying. You know, you always see like stuff where people are saying like, how are you a Chiefs fan? Are you from Buffalo? You need to go live in Missouri. Well, I used to live in Missouri. I actually lived in Missouri for eight years. I actually had a jersey signed by Matt Castle, Eric Berry, the, the Tyree Poe and stuff, but that got lost. But I've been to plenty of Chiefs games, especially living in Missouri for that long, you know what I mean? Like, it was something that I enjoyed, dude. I got to go to camps and stuff, so. So, congratulations on the big W that the Chiefs were able to pull off on Sunday against the San Francisco 49ers. I was hoping for a much more competitive game, but unfortunately... Um, that's not the way it went down. I was actually obviously rooting for the 49ers, but that's yeah, neither okay. here nor there. <laughs> but last week, um, the Chiefs took a pretty big L to the Buffalo Bills. Let's be honest. It was a big yeah. game um, for, for what uh, lies ahead and, and what could be uh, down the stretch. But I want to ask you, uh, what are your, your initial thoughts on that matchup and how it played out? It was a great game. Um, every time the Bills Chiefs played for the last few years, I don't think I've had a game that my heart wasn't pounding watching. Mm -hmm. um, this previous game, I take it as, yes, that was a loss. We needed that home field advantage, I feel like, for the playoffs because I'm not going to lie, coming to Buffalo, it's going to be crazy. That energy, especially for a first-time AFC Championship game or something that happens in Buffalo, it's going to be insane. That's right. going to be too wild. And the energy that's going to come from the stadium, it's going I'm it's it's going to be a win. If we have to play in Buffalo, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it's going to be a win. One of the things that we had talked about is that you felt like that the Bills just did barely enough to beat you guys and maybe you can expand on that why you think that that game should should have went the other way. All right. So, now if we now both teams have parts where they could have scored in the red zone. Mm -hmm. You guys had the turnovers on downs. We had an interception. Mm -hmm. So that negates about seven points of each right there. We had a missed field goal. Now, with us having a ball at the end, I feel like with knowing we could go for a field goal, I feel like the play type would have been different. You know right. what I mean? You take away right. those pass interference on two rookies, one on Stefan, one on um, Gabe, that helped put you guys in the red zone on those and keep the first down going. And other than that, I feel like it could have definitely went the other way. Yeah, so 
I find that extremely interesting. And that point that you made uh, with having the rookies and us barely beating you, that really sparked my interest and my desire of wanting to have this conversation with you. Because on the other side of it, I feel like the Bills should have won by more. Yeah. It, that's that's, that's how I feel. Because we were also missing – uh, all pro corner Tredavious White. Right. Uh, we lost our all pro safety and Micah Hyde for the season, and so we kind of were pieced pieced together on the back end. Our rookie uh, Christian Benford, he had his his hand wrapped up, so right. the Bills weren't one hundred percent on the back end, which right. would which I believe kind of negates the inexperienced secondary that the Chiefs had. However, you want to look at it. Like you said, the seven points in the red zone are a wash, but I still feel the Bills could have won by more because if Taren, if 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 Taron Johnson and if he gets up uh, from that interception, right. he is scoring a touchdown, and there's nobody there that's gonna be able to stop him from doing that. Right. And so not only do the Bills win by four points, but you add another seven to that. And I really think that the Bills could make a statement in that game. Um, I do a lot of writing for buffalodown.com. So head over to buffalodown.com. They are under the fan-sided family. Again, I got my boy Randy joining me, man, talking about the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills. We thought that, that the AFC was going to be competitive, but when you look at it right now, it looks like there's only two teams. Yeah, And it, and it looks like the Bills and the Chiefs will be in the AFC Championship. One of those teams are coming out of the AFC. I want to ask you, is there any other team that you think could make a push um, or threaten the Chiefs and the Bills towards the end of the year? My answer for me will be answered, I believe, about week eight or week nine when we play the Cincinnati Bengals. If we lose to the Bengals, or I, you know what I mean, or it's closer than what it needs to be, I feel like the Bengals will still be a threat to us. Yeah, you know, I would have to agree with you. I, I think that the Bengals are capable of being right there at the end of the season with the Bills, or with the Chiefs, fighting for a higher seed in the postseason, um, fighting for home field advantage. Um, the only thing about the the uh, Bengals is that they already got a couple losses, and, and so they didn't come out the gates really firing as hot as they should have to give themselves a chance to host playoff games right. later in the year. But I I still think that the Bengals will win that division. What do you think about the Bills? What do you see in them as a team, and what do you think – uh, some of their strengths and weaknesses. I like the Bills. I don't ever hate on the Bills until we play on the Bills. The Bills, to me, are overall a, a amazing-ass team. From quarterback to fucking safety, mm -hmm. all around good. My thing is, I don't know, it's like your play calling. That's the only thing I'm ever confused about sometimes, is just the play calling. Okay. You got any Bills gear? Man, I got a pair of socks from Jimmy's Wedding, bro. Wow, yeah, that's about it, huh? <laughs> oh, that's it, man. What are some other things that teams need to do to really beat the Chiefs? Hope the Chiefs beat themselves. You got to hope that for some reason, I don't know why Andy Reid or whoever calls the plays, Eric B. Enemy, likes to do trick plays that sometimes don't need to be called, that just need to be regular plays, you know what I mean? Or It's like we get a big lead. Or we'll have a decent sized lead or something, and then we'll take our foot off the gas. And next thing you know, the other team's within like seven to three mm -hmm. points. I want to see them keep being aggressive. I want them, I want to see a 60 burger. I don't care if it's from us or the Bills. I just want to see somebody get 60. But still, I would like it for the us. But I want that foot on the gas. You know what I mean? Yep. I, Do you think that the Chiefs have what it takes to make it back to a Super Bowl? That's yes, because. I mean, we got Patrick Mahomes. You see that offense with Kelsey and stuff. I feel like as we could score, everybody knows you, you, it's going to be a shootout. It's just our back end. Can we stop that deep ball? Can we make that one-on-one -on -one play without it being a penalty? There's so many times I've thought we've had shut a team down and it gets called back for pass interference or holding on a receiver. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that the Bills do very, very well. Um, they don't They don't get beat over the top. Miami right. did it to us this year. But uh, that's that's the only time that I've seen it all year. But Randy, I really appreciate you jumping on here tonight, man. I really appreciate your time and talking a little bit of Chiefs football with me. Um, but before I let you go, this wouldn't be the Notebook Podcast if I didn't take you through the lightning round. 
I didn't share any of these questions with you. You look like you lost right now, but the reason why is because I want the most authentic answers that we can get um, out of each and every guest that are on the show. So this is a question that I ask everybody. Are you ready? Yeah, man, I give it my best. Are you strapped in? <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's go so what would you like to be remembered for just being a genuine person if you could be in any movie what would it be and what character would you play silver war and i'm being the winter soldier or no was it the winter soldier yeah and i'm being winter soldier there you go okay <laughs> all right if you could join any fictional family who would it be and why? Family guy, bro. <laughs> family guy, bro. <laughs> yeah, family guy. Oh. Why family guy? Family guy, yes. Because I'm going to get Peter and that chicken to fight again. I got to see that. I got to <laughs> see that eye to eye, bro. I got to be right there for that one. Okay. Just a few more questions, man. If you could do either or, which would you choose? Teleportation or flying? Teleport. Why? Man, because, all right, so if you're flying somewhere, you got to fly, people can see you, whatever. You teleport. I'm in and out of bank. I'm in and out of wherever. I got to go without being seen. I do what I want. Pop, pop, back and forth, quick. Flying takes time. Teleport is fast. That's right. If money was no option and time wasn't an option, or a care, uh, what would you be doing right now? On some real, I'd be backpacking. I would backpack my way around the world, through the country, however. Money and time, no option. I am taking my time to see everything I don't normally get to see, man. I'm taking in all the little stops, the biggest TP in the world, the biggest cross on this side of Pennsylvania. Like, I'm seeing all of that. I'm taking my time and enjoying those moments. I'm going to not rush a single thing. Who is your celebrity crush? But Rihanna, though, man. Rihanna. Riri? Why you like Riri? A big ass forehead. I don't know, bro. What? But ever since she came out <laughs> the day when I was working at Damn Near Taco Bell with Hey Mr. DJ Pond on the replay, that Jay, I don't know. Yeah. I was a daughter. She just got thicker and finer and more richer as time went on. <laughs> she, she a part of the Jay Z's Billionaires Club. Like. Right. My boy Randy, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show with me tonight, man. This is the first time I've ever done this. Um, I'm about to go chop this bad boy up. Thanks for joining me, man. Really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll link up again in the future. Oh, yeah, man. Anytime. I appreciate it. It was definitely fun. And I want to thank all of the listeners out there or viewers as well uh, for tuning in to the very first simulcast of the Notebook Podcast. It's always a pleasure. Everything that I do was a blessing. And I uh, can't wait to have you along for the ride again next time. I'm your host, Kid Coons, and this is The Notebook Podcast.